Well, it's probably the most important thing I do as a broadcast meteorologist. I mean, I tell you every day if it's going to be warm or cold, if you need the umbrella. But when it comes to severe weather, that's where we can really make a difference and hopefully save people's lives. And that was the case back in 2005 with that uh, tornado. And keep in mind, this was on the heels of the Evansville Newburgh tornado, uh, nine days before that had killed 23 people at that point. So uh, the whole area was very sensitive to tornadoes because up until the Evansville storm, that was something that happened somewhere else. I mean, we had the ones in Owensboro and Providence, don't get me wrong. But in terms of the bigger cities in our viewing area, especially Evansville and Madisonville to a lesser degree, never really had to deal with a major tornado. But it, after November 6th, the Evansville storm, uh, people saw, oh my gosh, this can happen here. And then, you know, nine days later, we have an even larger tornado pushing into uh, one of the largest cities in our viewing area. So it was almost surreal that all this was happening in, in the middle of autumn, which is normally our nicest time of the year. And as that day unfolded, it was, um, it was a unique day because the first tornado watch actually came out the night before, 11 p.m. So I was at the station all night long monitoring for that tornado watch. And thank goodness nothing really came of that. But that morning around 8 a.m., we had a tornado warnings for the Evansville area. So it was one of the few nights that I actually had to sleep at the station. People always ask me, well, you're there all night. Where and when do you sleep? Normally I can't because I'm on the air. But in this case, I had to be there all night and then through the following day. So I knew I had to sleep at some point. Got a little sleep in 5, 6, 7 a.m. And then the tornado warnings came out for Evansville around 8 a.m. And Stacy was doing mornings at that point. And for, fortunately, nothing became of those tornado warnings. But obviously, Evansville, very on edge that, my gosh, we're under a tornado warning again nine days after we had all these fatalities. So we go through that morning event, but we still knew the big event was coming up that afternoon. And I was able to give Hopkins County almost an hour heads up that, yeah, these storms are forming to your southwest. They're moving in your general direction. You really need to pay attention here this afternoon. And of course, as the storm came into the county near Dawson Springs, it was clear that this was going to be a tornadic storm. It was just a question of how bad it was it going to be. And then it moved up towards the Madisonville area. And uh, it became even more clear that this could really be another event perhaps as bad as what we saw in the Evansville area, simply because it was such a largely populated area that was going to experience perhaps an even bigger tornado. And I was so physically and mentally exhausted at that point, simply from the lack of sleep the night before, voice was giving out, and emotionally, uh, and normally I'm very calm and uh, collected in these situations. But just, you know, in the back of my mind, you know, the fatalities of nine days ago, and I'm thinking, my gosh, we're going to have more. And I almost lost it on the air uh, because of that. And you don't have time to think about this. You're just doing your job, and, and, and you're on the air, wall-to-wall, -wall, continuous, and you're reacting to what you see. And it just, it was almost unbelievable that this was going to happen again. So I, I almost had to collect myself and say, all right, let's all calm down. We're going to get through this. This is what you need to do. And uh, it, it did help, uh, certainly, that, that I had gone through the, the Evansville storm nine days ago, kind of prepared me, all right, this is what I really need to do based on my experience with that storm. I've got to give people a heads up. I want people to contact people, call them in, in front of the storm in case they're not watching. Well, the technology was a big part of it. I mean, the Doppler part of the radar, which we don't usually even show. We talk about it all the time, first warning Doppler radar, but we rarely show you the Doppler part of the radar because that's the wind. And we only need that when the weather gets dangerous. So if we had not had Doppler radar, we would not have been able to identify the rotation within that storm. And we would have been looking at just the reflectivity, the echoes. And there wasn't a clear you know, hook to that. Because in the old days, that's what you looked for, a hook echo. And you kind of identified the tornado based on the hook. And we didn't have a real classic hook with this one. Uh, but when you looked at the velocity data, the Doppler, 
it was clear there was rotation and it was strong rotation. So that gave us confidence that, yeah, this is not only a tornado, but this looks like a major tornado that's moving in. So that was a big part of it. So yeah, the Doppler technology, which really went into uh, effect here in our area during the 90s, played a big role uh, that day. Going forward now, if this were to happen in 2015, the new technology we have uh, is dual-pole Doppler radar. And the dual-pole technology not only shows us how the wind is moving, but it tells us the size of the objects that the radar is, is hitting. You know, before we knew, you know, if it was, you know, raindrops, maybe hailstones, because you would get a higher reflectivity off of a hailstone. But with dual pole, it kind of measures everything almost in 3D. And so we can actually tell the difference between a raindrop, a hailstone, or debris. And we have now what's called debris signatures on the radar that say this is not rain, it's not a raindrop, it's not a hailstone, this is something bigger. And of course, that would have to be debris from a tornado that is doing damage. So this technology now, again, gives us more confidence uh, and more ground truth, if you will, that this is an actual tornado. Because of this rotation that we see on Doppler, we see it a lot, but not every storm that rotates is going to produce a tornado, thank goodness. Well, you know, I look back on my career as far as the major events that I've dealt with, and, and certainly the Hopkins County storm is in the top three, if not top two. And, you know, a lot of meteorologists just, uh, they kind of live for the big storms uh, because we're all fascinated by what nature can do. But, you know, having seen this almost firsthand, you know, certainly, you know, the aftermath of these storms, it's something I, I hope we never have to even deal with again uh, because, you know, I grew up outside of the tri-state, up, up in Pennsylvania, where we didn't have tornadoes. Growing up as a kid, I didn't have to think about the fact that my house might be gone at the end of a nice spring day when we had storms come through. Uh, so I'm not mentally conditioned to deal with this kind of stuff. So when I got here to the tri-state, you know, a lot of people, well, this is just the way it is. But for me, it's like, wow, this scares me. I don't like it. I don't want to see it. Uh, and I'm not going to wish, you know, a, a, a good storm just because of the fact that it's neat to look at. Uh, I'm, I'm much happier with, with nice, calm weather. But I know storms are a fact of life around here. And it's an important part of my job. And, you know, with the experience I've had here in the past 22 years, uh, I'm ready for the next one. I just hope we never have to deal with one again. You know, following the two uh, tornadoes back in November of 2005, it became clear that we needed more weather radios uh, in our communities because weather radio is like a smoke detector around here. It's going to wake you up or alert you when you're not expecting bad weather. And that's sometimes the way it, it works out. I mean, nobody expects to have a fire in the middle of the night, but if you do, your smoke detector gets you up and, and you, you get to safety. So, you know, certainly following the Evansville area tornado and then the Hopkins County storm, uh, we teamed up with Midland Radio and started a campaign in both the Evansville area and then eventually down in Hopkins County where we discounted the radios. And when the campaign was over with, uh, you know, several months later, we had more weather radios per capita in our viewing area than any other part of the country. But even though we have smartphones now, uh, you keep the weather radios going because, again, it's another layer of defense, another way for you to get that important information. Probably, uh, certainly one of the top uh, five storms that I've ever had to deal with in my career. Uh, the biggest one, uh, unfortunately, was the one in Evansville simply due to the loss of life. And I say Evansville, never really hit the city. It was Vandenberg County, War County, Henderson County. But we had, in all, 25 fatalities. And that was you know, the largest loss of life on my watch in my entire career. Uh, prior to that, we had the Owensboro and Providence tornadoes. And uh, those were major tornadoes. Uh, but, uh, you know, the Evansville one is at the top because of the loss of life. And I'd have to say Madisonville is probably number two simply because of the intensity of the storm. Uh, thank goodness we did not have any uh, fatalities there. But uh, due to the intensity of the storm and the fact that it was on the heels of the, of the Evansville tornado, that would probably be the, the second uh, 
biggest storm of my career, and I've been doing this for over 30 years now. People uh, in, in Hopkins County, in, in particular Arlington, south side of Madisonville, shared a lot of their stories with me, and it was humbling to hear uh, what, what they had to say. You know, we often hear from the public when we upset them, when we interrupt their program for a storm that's not affecting them. So when we have a storm like this where we really can make a difference, it's always nice to hear back from the public that, yeah, we appreciate uh, what you did. I mean, I tell you every day if it's going to be warm or cold, if you need the umbrella, but when it comes to severe weather, that's where we can really make a difference and hopefully save people's lives. And that was the case back in 2005.